start from the beginning because we have John here. Yeah. To just tell us the story. A lot of people don't know about what went down with Brenna Taylor. I'm sure many activists will just accuse you of lying. Mm -hmm. But at the very least, let's see, uh, if you would like to, you know, give us the breakdown of the story. I know you have a book about it, but you can just tell us what happened and we'll go from there. Yeah, I'll give you the, the 5,000 view story of it. Mm -hmm. So that night, um, we were asked to help. What, can you, do you know the date specifically? Yeah, so March 12th is when the briefing was. We didn't breach the door until March 13th, which is Friday night, full moon. Um, I came out from the briefing and I had two flat tires. It started pouring down rain. I got soaking wet while I was moving my stuff from one car to the other. So everything was just kind of one of those nights. Can you, can you, what was the briefing? It was for, so we, we had a, two separate briefings. SWAT did their briefing because they were, they were executing the warrants down Elliott. Um, the guys who were assisting them that were going to do the searches were at our brief along with us. All the, the houses that we were doing were on the board. They showed above it. Fortunately, I took a picture. It showed above it. No knock, no knock, no knock. It got to ours. It said knock and announce. So they had changed it. They were all signed as no knocks. So technically we served a no knock warrant, but it was not served as a no knock. Uh, it was signed by a judge as a no knock. But once it did not fit the parameters of a no knock, we didn't serve it as a no knock. We did the thing we're supposed to do. We corrected it and didn't do it. So the only reason it was served, it was written as a no knock is because Jamarcus Glover's history, he had five, I believe it was five, felony pending cases for guns and drugs he had ran from the police uh, and these were active cases not including the ones he'd already been in, uh, charged with and, and pled guilty to previously for mississippi and louisville and so once they realized they had a ping on his on his phone and a tracker on his car they knew he would not be on springfield so they said we're not doing that one as a no knock because it didn't justify being a no knock he wasn't there and they said, uh, we think it's only Brianna Taylor at the house. We don't think there's any kids, no dogs, nobody else there with her. Okay, cool. They've been watching this house for a while. So I had assumed that their uh, intelligence was good on the house, that it was just going to be Brianna Taylor. They said, she's a heavy set black female. Give her time to come to the door. Give her more time than usual. Because normally it's about 10 seconds. You're banging on the door. Please search warrant. If you don't hear anything, then you go ahead and hit it. So this one, when we went, we showed up and we gave it 45 seconds to a minute. It was, I think, six different cadences of knocking on the door and yelling police search warrant. The first two were just regular knocks, hoping she would just come to the door, be quiet, the neighbors wouldn't know. After she didn't come, started banging open hand really loud, yelling police search warrant. The neighbor upstairs heard us, came out, argued with our guys. They kept time to go inside. He didn't want to go back inside. Um, so finally he did. We hit the door. Um, once the door opened, I could see from right to left in the living room, and I was on the left of the door jamb. And Mike, the guy who did the ram, was on the right because you never stand in the fatal funnel in case somebody shoots through the right. door. So once the door came over, I scanned to the right to the left. Everybody at this point yelling, please search warrant, please search warrant. When I turned the corner, I had to step right in the doorway just to see down this hall. And as soon as I did, there's an ambient light coming out from the TV down the hall. Uh, we had lights on our guns. As soon as I turned the corner, I saw two people overlapping each other. It was like a big blob, but with a tall head and a short head. Mm -hmm. And they were both down the, and this hallway's only maybe three, four feet wide at the most. So very narrow hallway because it had an inset where Kenneth was standing that goes into the next bedroom. And that's Brianna's boyfriend? Yes. It's her boyfriend at this time. And so as soon as my eyes got to Kenneth, I never even got all the way to Brianna, even though they were like, it was basically one person, but I never got to her face. As soon as I got to where Kenneth was, I could see the gun because the flashlight. All I saw was the metal tip of the gun. And my brain was like, uh oh, and boom, it was over. He shot. He shot first. Yes, he shot. I felt it hit my leg. I returned fire. I got four rounds off. Yeah. Was the first shot fired? It hit you? Yes. So so you open the door. Kenneth, uh, what's, do you know his last name? Walker. Walker. Fires one round, striking you in the leg. Right. And then the other officers return fire? Correct. I fired four. I got offline is what it's called. So boom, 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 real quick. Four shots. Got behind the door frame, came around, shot two more. At that time, I felt my leg, realized there was a ton of blood. And I've seen, you know, countless gunshot victims over 21 years. And a normal leg shot that doesn't hit an artery is, it doesn't bleed much. I mean, you might have a trickle of blood down your leg. That's it. Well, this one, as soon as I put my hand on my thigh, I could feel just a glob. And I was like, oh, man. And I announced at the door. I mean, everything happened so quick. So I got six rounds off in probably less than two seconds. I mean, it's how quick this whole exchange happens. It's over before you even realize what's going on. Training kicks in and you just react. So I remember yelling, it hit my femoral artery. And I sat down on my bottom because I thought, I can't, I'm going to pump the blood out. That's yeah. what I was thinking in my head. 
And as I did that, Miles stepped up and was shooting already. And I thought, I can't stay here. I'm going to get shot by crossfire. So I jump up and I hobble out and I fall between the cars. And uh, my lieutenant comes up and they start working on me. I'm like, dude, I need a tourniquet. Get me a tourniquet. And uh, they finally got one, got it on, and got the bleeding stopped. But at that time, you got people say, well, why, did, why was there so many shots fired? 12 Seconds in the Dark, the book, the title comes from the time that door came open until it was silent from no gunshots. The chaos stopped. And that was about 10 to 12 seconds from what we've tried to reenact it and see. And so much happened, so much chaos, so many things go through your mind in that 12 seconds that it's just amazing how much damage can be done in that small amount of time and how much aftermath damage the city, the country, the nation from 12 seconds. And it's just, it's, it's sad. So, uh, so you get out of there, mm -hmm. you, you say you collapsed between two cars about how, what was the distance between, between the door and where you ended up on the ground with getting medical attention? So I'll try to give you a visual of it. Uh, if you're looking at an apartment complex and they have the, the inside where the stairs go up to the top, you've got that little foyer area, which is maybe, I don't know, 12 feet deep and 10 feet wide. That's where we were at. I was this, all, this was ground, ground floor, right? Ground floor. Yeah. And so I was all the way on the inside. So I hobbled out of there, then a sidewalk, a curb, and then the length of a car. So I went down between the cars, but scooted to the edge of the cars. And that's when my lieutenant grabbed my vest and pulled me out and got to work. But the thing about Kenneth Walker, you know, he keeps saying he didn't know it was the police. First, he, first they said nobody knocked and announced. Then he comes back later and goes, yeah, we heard him knocking. We heard him banging. And I thought it was some, her ex-boyfriend is what he said. Um, so if you thought, but then he said he thought somebody was doing a home invasion. If you thought that, why would you have your girlfriend, they got up, got dressed, he retrieved a gun, why would you tell your girlfriend, come in the hall with me? I'd imagine if he thought it was her boyfriend, you know what I mean? Like, they genuinely but thought if you, it was... But if you're that scared for your life that you're willing to shoot, wouldn't you have right. her call 911? Stay in here and call 911, get him over here. I mean, you know, there's a tough question about whether or not somebody wants to call the police to a situation that's about to get hot, whether they're even thinking about it, how someone reacts. I mean, you know, you're talking about 12 seconds. They hear a big bang. It's about 45 seconds. I can't assume these people would would react the same way I would. 